Hi, so I'd like to talk to you about today about topology and not some links in particular. So first I'm going to try and explain what is topology. So topology is the mathematical study of objects, and in particular the properties that don't change under pulling and pushing and twisting, those continuous transformations. So, for example, a coffee cup. If we can push and pull and twist a coffee cup to transform it into a donut. But how is this different to a ball? Without puncturing it or identifying two points, we can't pull and push and twist it to make it look like a ball they have an essentially different property, having a hole. This is what we call a topological invariant. An invariant is a property that doesn't change under this continuous deformation. So, these are the key tools for mathematicians like me. These invariants that don't change under this movement. So, I'm going to come into knots and links. So a knot and a link is similar to what you, sh you think of in your shoelaces. If you take a long piece of string and you pass the ends over and over one another, under one another, and fuse the ends together so you get one long loop, one circle embedded in three space. This is a knot. If you have many of those pieces of string, you tie them all together and you fuse the ends together so you have many different circles, that's a link. But if you, you can imagine a knot or link here, you can pull and push and twist it in many ways and lay it on a surface so it looks completely different from how you started. The challenge is in mathematics to tell those knots and links apart. And we do this using such invariants, these properties that don't change. If you have two candidate knots or links and you, you find an invariant that differs between them, since it's a property that doesn't change in this deformation, they must necessarily be different. The invariant that I study is called knot-fleur homology. So knot-fleur homology, very roughly, you take a knot and you build a three-dimensional surface from it. By looking at the way that curves in that three-dimensional surface intersect with each other, you can figure out some way the holiness in some way to the whole or the genus of a surface, like a donut, is different to the genus of a ball. It doesn't have a hole. But this all seems quite abstract. And you're saying, well, how is this very mathematical, very pure thing in any use to anybody? Now, and that's combining DNA. There's what, when DNA, the human genome is over two meters long when you stretch it out. And that's all packed into one tiny nucleus of a cell. So how it does that is it becomes knotted and tangled. It undergoes a process called supercoiling. And this knotting and tangling behavior you can understand using knot theory. When DNA replicates itself, an enzyme acts. This enzyme is called top isomerase, and it acts by performing local changes on the knot. Mathematicians, by using knot theory, have helped to show what shapes, what knots form when DNA becomes knotted. And through that, they've helped biologists to understand new antimicrobial drugs, how they can stop DNA of, ant of microbes, of ant of DNA of microbes from replicating. And so through doing that, they have use mathematics, in particular knots and links, in topology and biology.